through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 165. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're talking about Channing Tatum. He's kind of... Oh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get Not, there. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> kind of a hot commodity these days. <laughs> Sizzling. Yeah. Uh, but we're talking about him in honor of Magic Mike, mm -hmm. his stripper movie that's yes. coming out this Friday, the 29th. Mm -hmm. I believe 26, 7, 28, 29. Yes. Yeah. Boom. Math. <laughs> High five! <laughs> but we'll get there. We're going to start back in the early days of his careers, like 2005. <laughs> year I moved to Washington. Mm, you, and, you and Channing Tatum, a lot in common. A lot in common. Including our abs. Both were involved in the year 2005. <laughs> We're going to talk about his role in Coach Carter. Mm. I don't know if you saw Coach Carter, but it is a... Inspired by a true story about a basketball coach who starts uh, coaching at coaching at Samuel Jackson. Okay, starts coaching at I believe it's an inner city school. Okay, and he turns the team around from a bunch of losers the previous seasons. People who don't like focus or whatever, mm -hmm. and he turns them into a great team, hmm. and a defeated team to be exact. And Ultimately, they don't follow through on their part of the bargain, which mm -hmm. is going to school and stuff. And he actually locks them out of oh. the gym, causing them to forfeit games and lose their perfect season. And Hard it caused what well, caused up the big uproar in the town. It was like, you guys, mm. you're ruining these kids' chance of like a future like, in college. F your kids, they didn't keep up their end of the bargain. Uh, yeah, what I should have said. he's he's a little bit more respectful <laughs> okay. in this movie. Okay, <laughs> not traditional Samuel Jackson. He's much more much more military like, okay. if you might say. Okay. <laughs> but Channing Tatum plays one of the kids at the school, mm. sort of. I don't want to say dopey white kid, but <laughs> why that, not? That's essentially what he is. Okay, and we always need a token dopey white kid. I should know. Yeah, I played one yeah, for most of my yeah. life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and he uh, he plays. Kind of a dopey kid, and because I saw this actually first in terms of my Channing Tatum hierarchy, Interesting. that's kind of one of the things that got implanted in my brain. And I'm glad that you have a Channing Tatum hierarchy yeah. up here. And ever since then, I kind of think of him as a dopey guy, mm. sort of like Billy Bob Thornton. I sort of mm. feel like Billy Bob Thornton Hick, because you yeah. know, like Sling Blade yeah. was kind of one of I the first things. So, just like I think, you know, you know, Tom Cruise gay because Top Gun was the first thing I saw. <laughs> Bring it back! Yeah. <laughs> Call back. Wah, wah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you know, this film, I wouldn't say it's great, but it, it's it's a totally fine film. It's kind of an interesting based on a true story mm -hmm. in that regard. I like it. You know, in terms of like awards or whatever, it was getting nominated for things like ESPYs mm. for Sports Film of the mm -hmm. Year and MTV Awards, BET you Awards. Know, true sports stories are always so interesting. Just in there, they, it's, it's a weird line to cross because you get into that realm where it's either so close to reality that people fully identify it or so mm. bizarre that you can't believe it's based on something that's true yeah i mean this this is definitely not going to go into the realm of like hoosiers mm. as a classic <laughs> being that hoosiers is like 30 years old already mm -hmm. and still beloved and yeah coach carter has probably been forgotten in the yes. seven years since it's yes. been released yes that's true, true. <laughs> but you know nevertheless you know it's it's got its own little niche and i should note though we will not talk about it mm -hmm. The following year, two th or same year, I believe it might have come out, but mm. he was nominated in 2006. Channing Tatum won Breakout Male for his work in She's the Man, the Amanda Bynes film. Uh. So I'm just, I just want to, I want to throw this out here now as a uh, postulate, if you will, mm. throwing some big vocabulary Look at there. This. That was this your vocab word of the day? Yeah, on your, yeah. your app yeah. this morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> that despite him getting a lot of publicity for being a breakout star now, mm -hmm. Channing Tatum's gotten quite a bit of uh, hype over the years, hmm. and this is just sort of it's just never reaching, taken. Reaching, yeah, exactly. I will. I'll say that it's never really taken until <laughs> this year, really. So, Interesting. Yeah. So something to think about in the back of your minds. Very there. least, good work for him for keeping trying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. on keeping on. The film that I would say solidified Channing Tatum in my mind, very strangely enough, was Step Up, which yes. came out in, what, 2006? Next year, the year after? 
Yes, the okay. year after. Mm -hmm. And this is the story about a kid from the wrong side of the track. Essentially sort of a Romeo and Juliet-ish type mm -hmm. movie who... Kid from the is wrong side... Is that your review of Romeo and Juliet's story? <laughs> if, I, if I reviewed it, if I reviewed it, I probably would have thrown that in there. But it's about a kid from the wrong side of the tracks who sort of gets in trouble when he vandalizes the school and then he's forced to be a janitor there okay. to work on it. And while he's there, he sort of befriends this girl mm. and helps her with her dance routine because it's an arts performing okay. arts school and he's a talented dancer from the streets, streets. yes yeah. street Which dancer it'll come back in a moment oh god i know oh it comes back um like a bad meal it comes back at least yeah. twice sometimes but three times i, I like stuff up you know <laughs> I, I know you do <laughs> here's the thing like i'm not a fan of musicals mm -hmm. but i'm a fan of step up and I'll tell you why I think that is. Because musicals break out of the plot, mm -hmm. and they stop the plot for like five minutes, and then come back to where it mm -hmm. was before. This actually doesn't do that. It's just perform. They're performing mm -hmm. at a school, which the performances are then in the yes, movie. Yes, they're definitely more believable. It's it was well, well. I don't know about that. I don't. Know if, I think. It, yeah. I think in a world of musical versus dance movie, the believability might be an even uh, a seesaw I, effect. I, I would argue that this is more believable than most musicals. But nevertheless, you know, it's. I'm sorry, Alan. I know you probably. Alan's gonna smack you down. He tried inside. out for Step Up 3D. Just let's remember that fact, you know. But I think part of the reason I liked it is I like... I mean, I think Channing Tatum is a fairly charming guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to say he's the best actor in the world, but he's still pretty charming. Yeah. And Jenna Dewan, the female lead of the movie, is a fairly charming woman as well. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they have connected in real life. I believe hmm. they're either married or engaged in real life. So their chemistry on screen is true chemistry hmm. like the two of them connected so there's definitely something cool about that and i mean Chan tatum is a fairly talented dancer as are <laughs> the other people in the movie like mm. there there's mm. some legitimate talent there and i have a strange appreciation for dance movies as well so I know. solidarity alan <laughs> solidarity, you know, you know, stomp the yard let's go <laughs> but uh it's funny like Chan tatum and jenna doing Oh, I guess they are married. Jenny and Dewan okay. Tatum is her name now, ah. so that would imply that they're married. Yes. Won uh, the Teen Choice Award for Dance Movie. Mm. Um, they were. Sh he was nominated for Dramatic Actor, lost to Will Smith for the Teen Choice Award, so take that for what you will. <laughs> and it was nominated for uh, the Teen Choice for Drama Movie as well. So, you know... Whatever you know, it's 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 had its this moments. Is, uh, the version of high drama for the yes. Teen Choice Awards yes. is uh, Step Up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the sequel to it, Step Up to the Streets. Yes. Which was both two and yes. to the streets. Yes. Clever, yes. clever pun there. Double entendre. Did is the only other one that actually had Channing and Tatum involved with mm. it, and in that it was a cameo role. And I gotta say, his little cameo dance role in that movie, pretty pretty cool. <laughs> Sadly, not in the majority of the movie, but, you know. And take not that back through. for Step Up 3D. Nope. Oh, should note, though, this year, July 27th, Step Up Revolution comes out. So if you haven't jumped up on the Step uh, Step Up bandwagon, still have time. <laughs> you haven't jumped up on the Step Up bandwagon. I was going to say Step Up. I know. I'm step surprised up. you didn't. No. Uh, step Up on the ascend. Step Up. If you haven't ascended on the step. There's any number of ways you can <laughs> say it. There's still plenty uh, of time. Horror. Still plenty of time. Uh. Gonna move on, though, a few years later. Mm -hmm. uh, in a dramatically different-ish... I guess not really that dramatic, since he's still playing a dude from the streets. <laughs> fighting. The story of a kid who befriends another guy, and that guy guy terrence howard takes Channing mm. tatum under his wing and introduce introduces him to the world of street fighting mm. after he sees him kick some ass one day and because he's a beefy white kid now he's changed from dorky white kid to beefy white kid i think he's pretty much the same <laughs> okay. maybe slightly beefier white <laughs> okay. kid but he can now fight yeah. he doesn't dance he okay. fights and it can basically dance fight i don't think there's any dance fighting i do mm. remember him smashing a dude's head into a urinal i believe mm. from what i recall Okay. It's been a little while since okay. I've seen this movie. Um, <laughs> but it's, I mean, this film, I don't know. In terms of Channing Tatum, this is probably the lower end of the spectrum to me. I find Terrence Howard's role in this movie to be really weird. Like, he just, he acts kind of 
weirdly nerdy for no particular reason hmm. that I understand. And, like, he's very sort of, like, shy and... Hmm. Ain't not, a fight movie? Yeah, he's not really badass and sort of makes you wonder how he gets into this world of fighting. Hmm. But for whatever reason, he does. And Channing Tatum... I mean, I guess the fight scenes are decent enough. He never mm. really strikes me as particularly badass, mm -hmm. but the fight scenes are okay. It's just like the drama of the film is sort of feels all sort of very convoluted as he's got this rivalry with this guy who was on his dad's wrestling team with him, but he feels like uh, Chain Tatum never really respected his dad the way he should have, and he was closer to Chain Tatum's dad than. Channing okay. Tatum was, and it's this, this weird sort of convoluted story that I really found it hard to engage with. I mean, I think... I would the, assume audiences did as well, considering it, uh, this yeah, might be it, the first time not, I've heard of this movie. Did not do particularly well. Probably <laughs> broke even, you know, so not... You know, take that for what you will. Though, Channing Tatum, guess what he was nominated for? Teen Choice Award, he Best sure, Drama? Sure was. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Actor in a oh. drama. <laughs> Here is the tragedy, though. <laughs> Here is the tragedy. Guess who he lost oh, to? Oh god, I can't even imagine who would be worse that he could have lost to. Robert Pattinson for Oof. Twilight. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know if Channing Tatum has been stewing over the years about that one, but... Yeah, I will say I... I mean, fighting isn't... Twilight, I will say that for it. And the fight scenes are tolerable. It's everything between the fight scenes that really kind of slow the movie to a crawl. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't particularly recommend checking it out if you have the time. You know, I feel like my synopsis here of two minutes is plenty to probably give you an idea of what to expect. Yeah. 2009, though, was a tough year for mm -hmm. Mr. Tatum. <laughs> that same year, he had a little film called G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. Oof. Which is bad. It's, <laughs> it's unfortunate. Yeah, you know, if you saw the trailer, you kind of got a gist of how unfortunate it was when mm -hmm. they jump through, or he jumps over the train and Marlon Wayans jumps through the yes. train in their little, like, bionic suits. Robo suits. Yeah. Yeah. Because clearly that was, you know, every G.I. Joe had a yeah. robo suit. Unfortunate. <laughs> fly through buses. Here's the thing about G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, directed by Steven Summers, who I sort of have a love-hate relationship mm -hmm. with. He directed Deep Rising, mm -hmm. which I'm a fan of. Yeah. I think it's underappreciated. Cult classic. He directed The Mummy, which I have a strange appreciation for. It's sort mm -hmm. of like comfort food to me. Yeah, it kind of rides the line of, you know, if I try not to think about it too much or I'll start to dislike it. Yes. Otherwise, I love it. Yes. And he also directed Van Helsing. Which uh, is a good barometer of stink to use to <laughs> yes. showcase anything yes. else good. <laughs> and G.I. Joe, Rise of the Cobra. The thing about it is, Channing Tatum is by far not the worst thing in this movie. Mm. Number one, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Cobra Commander. Really not good. Really mm -hmm. ra rare miss for Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> I'm going to chalk it up to poor script writing, yeah, yeah. poor direction. <laughs> but... Kind of a ridiculous mm -hmm. part, if you ask me. Uh, positive, Christopher Eccleston, mm -hmm. Destro. Mm -hmm. Not so bad, kind of like him. Uh, negatives, everything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Check that. Uh, what's it? Uh, Snake Eyes. Ray He's Park. Decent. Ray Park. He's decent yeah. as well. He is the one continuity in the new G.I. Joe movie, which had Channing Tatum killed, mm -hmm. according to the trailers at yes. least. Theory being that they're now reshooting it to make him a major part of it because he's become a star. But Suppose, uh, also, of course, the byline they're saying is it's 3D conversion. That's why yes. they're reshooting. But still. But never, nevertheless, Channing Tatum is tolerable in this movie. The movie's not great. <laughs> no, but it's not. I watched this on Netflix streaming. You can as well if you're yes. so inclined. I was like, make a I drinking game watch, out of it. Out I want every time yeah. you you audibly ugh. Take a drink. You I might not make it to the third act. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> I, I I wanted to watch an action movie. This uh -huh. was one that they recommended, so F you, Netflix. <laughs> um, that's what you get for your old suggestion <laughs> thing. Work on that some more. But it's 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 tolerable. I'll say that. It's not good. 
If you accept that it's ridiculous going into it, it's probably even more tolerable. But the fact, like, the, the little, like, robotic suits mm -hmm. and stuff just make it so cheesy. Is they should have stuck with more of the Ray Parks-esque martial arts without crazy wires and special effects, because that's And there's even some stuff that, like, as a non-hardcore G.I. Joe fan that I don't even mind, like, his relationship with Storm the Baronessa. Shadow. Oh, oh, Baroness, Baroness. yeah. Like, they had a previous, like, romantic mm. relationship, which is sort of, like, a crux of, like, a love-hate hmm. kind of relationship between uh, Duke, as mm. Channing Tatum's character is known, and uh, Baroness. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's <laughs> it's a lot of mess, but I'm not going to blame Channing Tatum for it. Like, in terms of, like, an I mean, else you're playing Duke. Duke's a pretty hard character to... I mean, he's pretty pivotal. Yeah. And pi pivotal. Pivot. To, I, I'm giving up. Moving on. Let me just say he's better, much more, much better than Marlon Wayans. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> like, let's leave it at that. And I, I think Channing Tatum is a decent action star. Like I think mm. you know, in terms mm -hmm. of the things he's done in his career, action is one that he's pretty. I think he's well endowed for. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think he's probably better <laughs> fit for uh, <laughs> action and dance movies than he is anything else. <laughs> it's definitely a strong suit. Yes, that's for sure. Continuing on. 2009, probably the most notable film he mm -hmm. was associated with, yeah. though it was ever so brief, was mm -hmm. Public Enemies. Mm -hmm. You might not remember him in Public mm -hmm. Enemies, but he played, what was it, um, Pretty Boy Floyd. That's right, Pretty mm -hmm. Boy Floyd, who was captured by Christian Bale's Melvis Purvis mm -hmm. in the beginning Gun down, I believe. Is it gun down? Yeah, killed mm. killed by pretty boy or killed by Melvis Purvis in the beginning. Okay. And that's how Melvis Purvis gets his sort of chops gotcha. before going after Dillinger. Yeah. Very played by Johnny Depp. Yes. Very Melvis Purvis played by Christian Bale. Yes. I mean, we're talking Michael Mann, we're talking mm -hmm. Christian Bale, we're talking Johnny Depp. Really noteworthy film. Very brief little cameo for Janie Tatum, mm -hmm. but I mean, if I were an actor. I'd be pretty freaking psyched. Oh, I would yeah. be putting like that at the top mm -hmm. of my like filmography in terms yeah. of like notable projects. Yeah. And I mean the film itself is decent. I don't love Public Enemies. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it decently. I wish the trailers had been less uh, direct in sort of portraying mm. the entire arc of the story. Yeah. I think that would have helped me a lot. But, I mean, Johnny Depp and Christian Bale, it's really hard to complain. Mm -hmm. And Michael Mann, you know, the yeah. dude has an eye for visuals, so yeah. can't really Even complain. it's hard to, harder to watch stuff like Miami Vice still has. Miami Vice, number one in Bratislava. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a little Euro trip quote there. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Spencer. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, I try. I try. A modest success, though, mm -hmm. you know. But nevertheless, Johnny Depp, Christian Bale, hell yeah, I'd want to mm -hmm. be. I, hell yeah, I'd want to be in that project. Mm -hmm. One that you have a distinct familiarity with. Inter inter Str interestingly enough, that, the only one so far I've seen. Yes, is the 2011 so The Eagle. Mm -hmm. The story was it of a Roman soldier who goes back into the highlands of Scotland. Mm -hmm. In search of was it a uh, an, in, it's emblem? an eagle an insignia basically the top of their standard yes the, of the legion that his father I, I believe was with some family line I forget yes. exactly of Channing Tatum yes yes who takes his slave mm -hmm. Jamie Bell mm -hmm. um, the Lee Elliot yes as he's better known oh that's right yes yeah I thought so he's grown up familiar. yeah yes I've I've caught the bits and pieces of this so many times yeah. on HBO, HBO that yeah. I forget. The order sometimes. Yes, yes. But it's about him going, he taking his slave into the Highlands, and they mm -hmm. switch sort of places to sort yeah. of keep undercover. Yeah, because the slave speaks the local dialect, and he tells Probably Channing like Tatum, or whatever. Yeah, not to speak because if he speaks, they'll know by his accent that he's Roman, and they'll kill him on sight. So he's kind of acting undercover, and the first thing they ask is like, "Who is this person with you that doesn't talk? That must be your slave." The slave says, of course he is. So then they kind of switch roles in a little vice versa, Freaky Friday-esque. Gotta love that excitement. <laughs> High jinks ensue. People are killed. This uh, this is one of those trifecta movies. Mm -hmm. uh, failure at the box office. Mm -hmm. Failure with the critics. Mm -hmm. Failure with the audiences. Yeah. So 
Sorry to everyone involved. And this, this is one, one of those ones that when you're in the action section of your Netflix queue and you're just going through the new releases and you've never heard of any of them, this is one of those ones you're like, what's this Eagle movie that only came out a year ago that I've never heard of? It has a lot of things, you know, going for it. I don't necessarily think it's it's on its surface. Like, I think the concept sounds interesting mm-hmm. on, on and just in terms of ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's directed by Kevin McDonald, who directed The Last King of Scotland, mm-hmm. which Forrest Whitaker won mm-hmm. Best Actor for. Mm-hmm. It's got Channing Tatum and Jamie Bell, who I think both are decent actors it, in their own right. It's not a bad idea uh, conception. I just think they should have probably tried to be less plot heavy and more of an action flick i think Mm. they probably would have been a little bit more profitable or successful if they just tried to do away with any dramatic tension between slave and roman and just tried to make it like hey they're killing a bunch of dudes and they got to get along at the same time i don't i just i don't know if it's i think it just might be that people don't like like period romany pieces because centurion came around Mm -hmm. that same time the neil marshall michael fassbender Mm -hmm. Roman Legion thing, which is also in the Scottish mm-hmm. Highlands. Um, the sword and which, which is great. I like that film mm. a lot. Centurion, go see that one. I mean, I believe that's even on Netflix streaming. I think so, yeah. Uh, very much enjoyed that film. Go see that one. We all love uh, the fast. Yes. And Mike, <laughs> Neil Marshall's pretty mm-hmm. sweet, too. No, The Descent. Mm-hmm. Gotta give him credit for that. So, if I were to say, see one Roman Legion Scottish Highland film, yeah. see... Centurion. Yeah, sadly. But, you know... Put Eagle on if you want some background noise while making dinner. Yeah, I guess that would work. I'm sorry, Channing Tatum, but that's... Yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to this year, one that we mentioned during our DVD picks. So mm-hmm. if you haven't seen it, you can now see it. Mm-hmm. And that is 21 Jump Street. Mm-hmm. This is directed by, was it uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who mm-hmm. did uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, yes. which is kind of interesting to go from a animated feature to a comedic action film <laughs> did a good job yeah you know, gotta give him credit for it Made a this good is sense one of, of the comedic timing well perhaps part of that's because jonah hill was one of the writers on it uh, as well as an actor mm-hmm. this is one of those great films it seemed like it was going to be like um star Hutch, Hutch, where yeah. it's just sort of cheesy parody film mm-hmm. and it does sort of parody the mm-hmm. original tv show but at the same time it pays homage to yeah. it and is just sort of a fun action cop mm-hmm. movie in its own right it just does that sort of tripod of uh parts mm-hmm. all well i mean a good a good parody should have as much homage as it has mockery and mm-hmm. that's where a lot of the things like starsky and hutcher like the dukes of hazard kind of fell flat as they tried to be too much parody and not as much homage and actually trying to like remember what it was about the source material that was popular and try to make that resurged in the present day so and gotta give a lot of credit to jonah hill and jenny oh, yeah. because they had just a great chemistry between the two of them they're really funny together this was the movie jonah hill slimmed down a ton for mm-hmm. looked, looked amazing, great. crazy yeah, looked great, great. Good compared you look at super bad and then you look at this and it's hard to imagine it's the he, same guy he looks he looks great in the movie not to be too strange about that. Um, well, it's a Channing Tatum, you know, segment. We're going to end with Magic Mike. We can talk about how good-looking men are. Yeah. Uh, Got to give a lot of credit <laughs> to the great supporting cast in the movie. Mm. Ice Cube, Rob Riggle, uh, Chris Parnell, mm-hmm. Ellie... Was it Ellie Kemper from The Office? Ah, uh, yes, yes. You got uh, Jake Johnson from The New Girl mm-hmm. and Safety Not Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Great, great group of people as supporting some interesting little cameos. Mm-hmm. Just throwing that out mm-hmm. there. Won't spoil it. Yeah, it's... It's funny, I mean, it's just been released this year, and it's already nominated for a slew of MTV awards. It was nominated for, let's see, Best Cast, Best On-Screen Transformation, hmm. Best Gut-Wrenching Performance. <laughs> it won Best Music, hmm. nominated for Best Fight between Chain Tatum and Jonah Hill, and <laughs> Best Comedic Performance for Jonah Hill as well. Wow. Um, Good work, I think Hill. I think Chain Tatum was really funny as well, yeah. so don't, don't, don't forget him no that was one of the them. things that was nice when people heard about when the bu- after the initial buzz came out people were after it was out were like it's great because jonah hill's hilarious and surprisingly so is channing tatum i think people were expecting him to be more Duh, and yeah. so to see him actually be animated and funny was i think caught people off guard pleasantly yeah so that brings us to this Friday, the 29th. We're talking Magic Mike, mm-hmm. the stripper movie. Yep. Based on Channing Tatum's life. Yes. Let's do a little, ba- yeah. let's, let's do a little background here. Um, the story is about a stripper, Magic Mike, mm-hmm. played by Channing Tatum, yes. who teaches a novice, Alex yes. Pettifor, mm-hmm. uh, about the occupation while seeking a lifestyle outside the world of stripping. With the help of his protege's sister. Okay. They work at a club, Exquisite, which mm-hmm. is owned by 
former stripper Dallas, played by Matthew McConaughey. Shirtless as ever? Yes. I mean, in terms of, like, <laughs> attractive males, this has got to be one of the greatest lineups ever you got. Jane Tatum, Alex Pettifor, who was a male model in mm, his own mm-hmm. right, before films like I Am Number 4 and oh, stuff. Okay. Uh, Matt Balmer from White Collar. Okay. Uh, the attractive dude from White Collar, mm-hmm. if you know what that is. Uh, Joe Manginel- Manginelli. Meninginello, sorry, from True Blood. Oh, the big okay. werewolf dude mm-hmm. from True Blood. Matthew McConaughey. I mean, yeah. pretty, pretty impressive. Matthew, group. I wear no shirt. McConaughey. Yep. Um, in terms of the progress of the film, in 2009, T- Tatum told an Australian new- newspaper they wanted to make a movie about his days as a stripper, um, which. Uh, is in part based on his experiences in Tampa, Florida when he was 19 years old. Oof. Youngin. Youngin. Um, Fresh meat. Apparently he said he already had a director picked out at that hmm. time and he wanted to do it with Nicholas Winding Renf oh, wow. on Drive, mm-hmm. which would be really interesting. Apparently he really loved his work on Bronson mm. and so he Such thought he'd be appropriate movie. for it. Um, nevertheless, that, I don't know if it fell through or never materialized mm-hmm. in the first place. It's being directed by Steven Soderbergh, one of the last films he mm-hmm. claims he's ever going to direct. The film co-financed by Steven Soderbergh wow. and Channing Tatum. Wow. So they're really putting their money where their mouth is mm-hmm. in terms of this. Cost only $5 million. So they really, for the incredible cast that yeah. they have in it, it's amazing to think that uh, they got all those people involved. It also explains why there has been not too much actual, like, official press buzz about it until very recently like yeah they took their time getting a trailer for our quarter two preview like i remember there was nothing there wasn't a trailer there wasn't a poster there was very little information yeah they really they really took their time on it and yeah they just released a trailer Mm -hmm. i guess the thing about that is though when you have as attractive (laughs) a lineup as they have like i think you just post that film on the, the list and People are going to come. Or you post movie posters that, you know, start at belt and end at neck. And yeah. just say Magic Mike across the nipples. And that's, I mean... Yeah, you're pretty that's good. That's probably good. I, I mean, have six variations of it, put it everywhere. I would be shocked Twilight if it didn't make up. upwards of $15 million, $20 million opening weekend. I, I mean, I feel like with that kind of lineup, you're definitely going to get an audience coming out for it. So. And I feel with the, like, Fifty Shades of Grey, Twilight... Uh, cougar moms looking for their kind of cup of tea in the movie theater might get a good word of mouth and there might be a lot of raging teen, yeah. teen mothers yeah or mother mothers and teens not teen mothers that are I, I wonder if it'll get any sort of backlash from you know male audiences i mean male audiences just won't go see it that's yeah, probably well that, that'll be well the that, well that, that's, that's, that's where my <laughs> point is that how oh. much does that cut out of their mm. profits because you know straight males just will be like I don't want to see that or hey something man, like that. Full Monty's a great movie. I agree. I mean, I, th- I think. I mean, it sounds it's based on his life. It could be a very interesting yeah. story. I'm interested to see how much of uh, you know just how much it go how much it ends up. You want to know how much full frontal they get? Mm. Let's be real. Yeah, I do. No, uh, <laughs> how much dong is hung? <laughs> I need to know inches <laughs> per movie. No. uh... <laughs> I'd just be interested to see how much it's going to be like if it's going to be more a serious movie, if it's mm. going to be more comedic. I think that, that yeah, that's an interesting question. That tone is the one thing that I think has not been strongly conveyed. I don't think that's going to hurt. My it guess is it's going to be it. dramatic. Yeah, I that, mean, that would if you get Soderbergh sense. involved, I mean, he's generally not geared towards comedic <laughs> films. I mean, Skizopolis and a few others, notwithstanding, is more of a serious guy. That's true. Um, so, that would be my sense, but let us know your thoughts. Mm-hmm. And join us next week as we give you our DVD rundown for the week of July 3rd. Mm-hmm. Boom. Right before Independence Day. Getting patriotic. Mm-hmm. And let us know your thoughts about Chain Tatum and Magic Mike at MacGuffinPodcast.com Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast Phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Roku. We're on Blip. We're on Miro. Check in. Get glue. Good times. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.